Good evening there, Wargamers. So, today is Saturday. Well, technically it's Sunday now. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, 7th of October, and uh, yesterday, I guess now, Saturday, uh, went and picked up this lovely book. Uh, rather nice uh, new codex, the first one of 6th edition. So I am pretty stoked to get my hands on this. Finally, have seen all the rumors and lots of leaked stuff for the last uh, month or so. Just uh, little tidbits of information flying around the interwebs about um, this new addition to um, all the chaos goodness in 6th edition now. So, the uh, the book is accompanied by many other releases uh, today. I guess not necessarily many, but uh, there were a whole bunch of plastic kits or plastic kits and resin kits that uh, got released at the same time as the book um, to fill in some of the gaps that, uh, that this book created in the miniature line. Uh, the number one on my list to pick up was certainly the... Raptor and Warp Talon box. This just it, I, they've been needing plastic jump infantry for a long time, in my opinion. So uh, I actually picked up two of those and spent most of today working on trying to figure out what I'm going to do with them. Uh, color scheme, how I want to assemble them. Do I want Raptors or Warp Talons? Um, and uh, so far, this is how far I've gotten. They are still all on the sprue. And the big reason for that is because I haven't decided if I want Warp Talons or Raptors. So, uh, I thought I'd start a discussion with you guys about this. Uh, I will probably have already decided what I'm actually going to do with them by the time you guys see this video. Just because I'm not that indecisive, I'll probably get it done this weekend get them assembled just because I'm impatient and I want them uh, in some sort of playable state so that I can start messing around with them and testing them out while I'm painting them. So <clears throat> here is here is the the dilemma for me. Um, and let's uh, let's take a look and you can follow along with me. I'll give you page numbers as we go. Um, I am going to I'm going into the army list at the back of the book here. <clears throat> okay, so we're in the fast attack section. This is pages 100 and 101, um, the entries for the Raptors and the Warp Talons. So <clears throat> the dilemma here is just point value here. Is, is, it, uh, is it worth it to take the Warp Talons? My gut instinct was take the Warp Talons. They look really cool. They're the brand new thing. Uh, it'll be great. Yeah. So I, <laughs> um, but the more I read about them, the uh, the more I question their uh, their usefulness in comparison to their point value. So let's look at what we've got. All right, so you've got the standard stat line of pretty much everything else marine related in the book. Um, it's the same in same thing, just carbon copy of everybody else because they're marines um, nothing different about it so far as I see here they're jump infantry just like the raptors um, and the the main differences here is that they actually get the demon special rule which gives them a five up in balm, which is nice um, and then they also get warp, uh, warp flame strike, which I don't remember correctly. Let's let's uh, make sure I'm remembering that right. Oh, that's the thing that uh, when they arrive from deep strike, they blind things within six inches of them. Uh, but as I understand right now, um, let me uh, let me double check in the big rule book and just uh, make sure that I am remembering this correctly okay so essentially you've got an ability that um, when they deep strike in within a radius around them uh, things are blinded so they get the 
uh, blind special rule but I want to make sure that it's not it doesn't actually call out the fact that they um, that it happens automatically and they don't have to take the test because normally there's an init test that you have to take to actually get them uh, you know properly blinded um, and if, if you don't have to take that test then they may be a little bit more worth it or at least a little bit more survivable on the deep strike turn because um, when you deep strike you cannot assault that turn that you can only shoot okay so they just count as being hit with a weapon that has that blind special rule but um, they still take the test to see if they're actually blinded or if they uh, were quick enough to avert their eyes as the the rule book says in its fluff text um, you pay a ton more points you pay you're paying like uh what's the percentage here but more than 50 like 60 or 70 percent more points for warp talons than you are for raptors um, and they don't have the ability to take any of the special upgrade stuff they're stuck with the the weapons that they they're equipped with in their their main entry which is a pair of lightning claws which is nice uh, so you know some of that cost is taking into account the fact that they have a pair of lightning claws on every single person in the unit. So you're re-rolling failed wounds and then um, if you if you're giving them uh, veteran of long war the upgrade there then they're re-rolling to hits on marines um, in the the first round of combat with something. So I mean it's nice. Um, you can mark them with one of the the gods, so um, Corn or Zinchar or Slanesh. Uh, if this is going to be a really killy list, I'd say go for um, go for Corn. Uh, if you want it to be slightly more survivable and up that invulnerable, say from a five to a four, um, Zinch is good, but that's even more expensive. Um, the the bottom line is that for a 10-man unit, um, bare minimum, if you give them if you give them any marks, um, let's see, what's that add up to? Uh, 10. It, at a bare minimum, you're looking at, you know, 350 points to 400, depending on what you what you give them um, so I mean that's that's a lot of points to sink into a 10 man assault squad something you you want to throw into combat for that same number of points uh, you could you know if you stripped it down if you stripped down bare minimum didn't give them any marks or icons or anything you could just about field two 10 man squads of raptors um, now granted you'll want to give them some sort of mark um, potentially um, and the marks on them are cheaper because they are cheaper so giving them a, a nice boost like more attacks or uh, better saves or something like that is, is going to be it's going to affect the, the balance of the game a little bit less but um, I just I don't know I don't know how effective warp towns are going to be I, I feel like they if in the right situation they will wipe out whole marine squads on the charge uh, because they're they're wearing lightning claws and I believe those are AP3 so they're just gonna ignore all the armor on any marines um, so they'll chew through tactical squads like nobody's business um, but I just don't think that I'd want to intentionally try to use their um, warp flame strike uh, ability which um, gives them it blinds things around or potentially could blind things around where they deep strike just because they're they're really sitting ducks out there in the middle of the battlefield next to an enemy unit on the you know when, when they deep strike in I guess if you're if you're counting on using that as um, sort of a, a what consolation prize if you accidentally um, 
scatter over towards somebody else, you might be able to bring them down to weapon skill, ballistic skill one, uh, potentially. Uh, but I wouldn't even count on that. Uh, and on top of that, even if they have a really low ballistic skill, it's not going to keep them from charging you, which would then deny you the full charge, which you take advantage of. Um, you know, your, your extra one on the charge, or if you've taken the Mark of Corn, your extra two from Rage. So that's a pretty big bummer. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like, especially for small scale games, uh, and if you don't have a everyone runs Marines local meta, um, that Raptors, you get more bang for the buck points wise. Now, if you're looking for a hyper elite squad that you can throw into a really large scale game, like maybe an Apocalypse game, I'd say Warp Towns are pretty amazing. Um, they they do lots of stuff, but realistically, from my experience so far with Warhammer 40k, it's much better to have two squads that do two very separate things than to have one squad that has all the bells and whistles. Because number one, you want more feet on the ground. Uh, number two, you want your roles to be split up so that nobody's doing double duty. Um, so, having a Raptor squad that's completely focused on assault, and then having another Raptor squad that is completely focused on being a mobile flyer platform, I think you're going to have a much better go of it than just throwing in one really elite Warp Talon squads. But, maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Uh, I, I could be missing some huge piece of this that's going to make them completely worth it. Um, but, you know, I kind of went into this conversation with myself um, and with you, but I mean, your responses will be delayed, obviously, because this isn't happening in real time here. Um, kind of with an open mind, trying to, to figure out what I wanted to do, but I think talking this out out loud, the Raptors seem like a much better choice out of that box, um, which kind of makes me sad because I really wanted to play uh, with some Warp Talons. They looked really nice. Uh, on the upside, I will have a ton of Lightning Claws um, out of the two boxes that I got. I should have, what, 20 of them? Um, so, you know, that'll make for easy conversions and upgrades for Champions or Chosen or what have you. One thing I didn't really like about the Warp Talons uh, from a model standpoint is little fins in the... Uh, in the artwork in the book, it makes them look like wings, and they look pretty darn rockin' in the book. Like, they look scary, and they look uh, real mean, but the little itsy-bitsy tiny bits that they have on the sprue here that are supposed to be their little wings, they just don't cut it as far as I'm concerned. Um, they just look really shrimpy. They don't look like they'd uh, measure up, if you will. Gorgeous looking kits, though, I have to say. I'm really, really excited to get them put together, but uh, I'm just sort of wrestling with myself internally, trying to figure out which one of the things I want to buy. I will say this, while we're on the subject of fast attack choices for this new army, the unsung hero and surprise smash hit, uh, at least in my opinion, are bikes. They're dirt cheap now. Um, Take a, take a look. Um, I'm, I'm trying to, to avoid discussing specific rules and point values and things in this video just for legal reasons. I don't know what the legality of it is, but just to be on the safe side, I'm avoiding it. Um, but, man, they're cheap. They're barely more expensive per model than Raptors are. They're only a couple points more. And uh, you get a boost to your toughness and you've got increased mobility uh, because you can turbo boost on a bike if I'm not mistaken here you also get Hammer of Wrath which is fantastic you get impact hits essentially for charging into combat so you've got more survivable you've got impact hits you can shoot your bolters on the way into combat and you do this all for way cheaper that sounds like a win-win to me. I, I'm dusting off my, my Chaos Bikers now. Um, I'm actually going to finish filling out the squad to a full uh, 10. I think it's just 10 that you can take in a squad. I'm not 100% on that. Let me uh, double check. But they really did um, turn.
turn them into something worth taking. Um, I've also heard that Spawn are actually pretty decent in this edition too. I haven't really dug into them too deeply, but um, I mean they they look at least on the surface to be pretty pretty darn usable and not too terribly expensive for what they are. Um, I don't remember what I was going to look at on bikes here. What was I looking for? Oh, the number in the squad. How many can I take? I can take, yeah, ten. So, I've got seven right now and I need to get three more. I'm thinking I might just actually pick up the, um, the Battle Force. I could always stand to have another Rhino and a few more Marines. Uh, I might actually do some converting those into Havocs. I don't have any heavy support choices except for a Defiler, um, which um, I've actually magnetized a bunch of the arms, and I, <laughs> I made this really weird close combat arm a while back, and I don't know if I still like it or not. Uh, why don't I grab it real quick, and I'll show you what it looks like, and you guys tell me what you think. So, here's what I got. Here's the body, and I've magnetized um, the arms so that uh, I can throw on a Havoc launcher or. Oh, whoops. That just popped right on out. How embarrassing. There we go. Magnet up there. Or close combat weapon flail, which you can see I've actually heat gunned and then melted around because normally they're just straight out like bristles on a, a broom or something. I always thought that looked really silly, so you're having it look like it's actually in motion would be good. But uh, here is the close combat weapon that I was talking about a second ago. Let me see if I can actually get this thing to focus in on this. So it's just some chainsaws from the old, um, what's that little Imperial Walker? Can't I can't think of the name of it. Sentinel. It's the old, uh, Sentinel, uh, forestry uh, chainsword arms and then just some random spiky bits and I got it all mounted onto um, I can't get this thing to focus correctly I think it's locking onto my face let me move it over just a little bit there we go um, this is what was it the Hellfire cannon? Hell something? I don't remember what it's called. But it's one of the Bane Blade cannons. And I just threw a Chaos Icon on there and one of the gargoyle heads. And this was actually part of a uh, scale tank kit. I think it was a dragon kit for maybe a King Tiger. Uh, and then just a little bit of green stuff to do uh, hosing between the two things. And uh, the rest of it's just plastic card that got cut up, and I think these were um, hydraulic pieces from a Lehman Russ. They're the two parts that go onto um, the dozer blade. Um, yeah, I don't remember where these came from. Where did they come from? I'm sure it'll come to me later. But uh, yeah, they just the whole thing snaps in here. You got double close combat weapons if you want them. Um, yeah. Oh, and you can see how I magnetize it. I actually got the magnet down in here, and then um, got it positioned with some glue, and then poured in resin around it uh, to really hold it in place. I also did the same in here. Um, just happened to find this thing that fit nicely in there. Same over here. And uh, also got one for the Reaper Auto Cannon. So I did not uh, 
this one is not movable or posable just sort of tacked it down in place so that uh, we could fill in this back side because it was not going to be possible to magnetize it without doing that so yeah, there he is with the reapers all right actually i think those big spikes were probably part of one of the dozer blade deals from one of the rhinos need to finish this defiler up um, so uh, one of the other things I wanted to ask you guys about obviously there's lots of excitement about the new chaos codex that we've been talking about so far in, uh, in this segment but I have a mounting number of armies that need painting and uh, trying to figure out what you guys might like to, to see progress on. I've got about about 4,000 points of chaos right now that needs painting. I've got about 2,500 points of Skaven that needs painting. Probably about 2,000 points of Dark Eldar that needs to be painted. Uh, 3,000 to 3,500 in Blood Angels that needs to be painted. I don't think there's anything else big. I've got some circle Ouroboros from um, uh, hordes or war machine and hordes. Um, I do have some Kador that needs painting. Probably only 50 to 75 points of Kador that needs painting. Um, and most of that is infantry. I've got most of my warjacks painted. But uh, yeah, if you if you have some specific requests uh, out of those things um, that you'd like to to see me work on here in the, uh, the vlog zone, if you will, as opposed to doing a, a real full-on tutorial, because we've got a fairly structured thing going on there as far as what we're doing right now, and uh, I'll probably end up taking requests again soon to find out what you guys are interested in seeing uh, terrain wise uh, unless Dave has other plans I haven't talked to him about that yet so that, uh, that may or may not be happening it's just my assumptions here so um, mostly I'd just like to hear all of your thoughts and comments on the new chaos codex um, what do you like what don't you like what do you think you're gonna take what's uh, sort of a surprise for you as far as a um, something that looks way more viable than it has in previous editions um, is there are there things that you think were not done in the best way possible that you wish it, they had done a little differently um, I just really like to to get to nitty gritty with you guys about this book and just uh, I guess hash out um, some of the the wheat from the chaff here if you will uh, I think that, that there's some really good hidden gems in there. I think the bikes were the biggest, most obvious of the hidden things in this book. They're really quite good now. Um, and, and part of that goodness is their cheapness. Um, but, yeah, it, it'll, be, it'll be really fun to get those out in the field because I think they're just going to rip stuff up and you can take tons of them too. And just so fast and survivable with toughness five and a jinx save. I mean, I would not want to fight a whole bunch of those at the same time. Plus, they got lots of nice upgrades and things like that. You can take marks of chaos on them to give them extra attacks on the charge, and yeah, you all, you know the drill. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll probably stop here before I bore you all to sleep with my rambling. Plus, it's getting awfully late, and I I'm. Uh, <laughs> losing focus here so I'll get off before it gets too boring for everybody else. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, sort of internal discussion rant here about the new chaos stuff focusing on the jump infantry and some of the fast attack. I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, thanks again for watching and happy wargaming.